Hey guys, it's Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we're going to go over factors limiting strength production. Now, some of these factors you may or may not know of, but the ones you don't know of are the ones that are going to possibly limit how strong you can possibly be. So let's get to it. The first one that we need to attack is the trainability of the individual person. Now, this can come down to a lot of things. One, genetics. Again, and genetics, in my opinion, don't play as crucial of a role as what you start with, but what you can adapt to. So a lot of people, you know, they strength train for years and their bench never goes up. They deadlift for years and their deadlift never goes up. And then some people seem to just touch weights and grow. That's genetic. Okay, and a lot of that can't be changed. So what we have to do is we have to know what the trainability of the person is with genetics. The next one that we have is former ability. And this is why it's so important that if you want to be great, you got to start off being great younger. Okay, and what that means is not necessarily to specify. We're going to get into that in a video about me being against youth lifting. USAPL has a new class out like of eight years old, which is ridiculous. We're not talking about that. We're talking about ability as in general ability. Can you run very far? Can you sprint very well? Can you do 25 push-ups? Can you do 10, 15 pull-ups? Now those things may not directly have an effect on saying being a good lifter, but they will affect it later depending on what your base work capacity is. The next thing that we have that kind of fall along the lines of genetics is hypertrophy potential. Now, I'll give you a prime example. Flex Wheeler, one of the greatest bodybuilders ever, especially in the 90s, was we were sitting down and talking, if you don't know, go back on our YouTube series and look at Flex Wheeler's podcast. But Flex Wheeler, over a summer, put three inches on his arms in like four months at like a teenager, like 14, 15 years old. And right then and there, he knew that he wasn't the same as everyone else. The point is, is that he had tremendous genetics in hypertrophy potential. Now, why is this possible? Well, it could be hormone profile. It could be at the muscle cell in of itself. A lot of things we just don't know of why some people can grow and just some people can. But your hypertrophy potential is huge because at the end of the day, bigger can and sometimes and often is stronger. So if you're genetically, you know, you graduate high school and you weigh 150 pounds, there's only so many stand effort inks that can go from weighing like 150, 160 to 300. It's just not very common. So the point is, is that hypertrophy potential is huge in your factors to developing strength. In this trainability section, the other thing that I think that is often not talked about, and actually I just learned about it reading up for this particular video, is your natural unbound testosterone, which again is genetic. Now this means, how much testosterone do you have floating around in your body naturally? So a lot of people go, well, this guy's on anabolic steroids, blah, blah, blah. Telling you right now that none of that is affected nearly as much as your natural testosterone level. All the synthetics in the world, if you have a natural high testosterone level, it's always going to be better because it's your testosterone. That means it bonds to exactly what you want it to bond to. That's why some people, if they take, say, testosterone cythionate or entheonate, they may get completely different gains from it because it's not exactly the same testosterone ester as your body naturally makes. So natural unbound testosterone levels are a huge factor in getting better. Now, what can we do to change some of these areas? Well, this one we have to really focus on because a lot of these, if you didn't do this at the right time and you can't fix hypertrophy potential naturally, but we can do some things with natural unbound testosterone. What are some things we can do? Well, one, we can reduce or eliminate plastics. So if we reduce or eliminate plastics out of our system, i.e. drinking out of plastic water bottles, eating with plastic utensils, etc., etc., and most importantly, putting paraben products on our body, such as the wrong types of soaps, hair products, and things, and makeup, and things of that nature, you're actually lowering your natural unbound testosterone, okay? Another thing that affects your testosterone tremendously is sleep. So again, when you come back to this trainability, it becomes something of a 24-hour-a-day position or job. That means that the only thing that we can fix up here if we don't catch it in the right time is our natural unbound testosterone. Your former ability, you can't change. You can't go back in time and go, shit, I should have been in gymnastics from the age of 4 to 10. 
too late for most of us now. Hypertrophy potential, we really can't change that, but there are small things we can do to increase this natural inbound testosterone. One of those plastics, and now we're gonna to get to another video, a second part of this, of some other factors limiting testosterone and trainability and strength production. So the first series of this is trainability, and now we'll get into other things in different videos. So if you need help with diet or training, go on winningstrength.com, check out our manuals, join Patreon, and Train Heroic, we can answer any of your questions on this particular topic.